I don't know many actors Or what an actor knows All I do is wonder All I do is ponder The inner lie of score Oh, no, I don't know many actors, but when I get to shows, I marvel from the circle, or I marvel from the cheap seats at the inner line. Of Scorpio It's hard to read an actor They're a book that's quick to close But nobody's escaping No, nobody's escaping from the inner line of Scorpio The inner line of Scorpio on the surface shows how deep the feelings go it rocks your very being it racks your way of seeing it's the inner line of the score of Got such an inner life, baby. You've got such an inner life, yeah. Oh, you've got such an inner life, yeah. Like every dream companion They'll sting you on the nose But it's some kind of voodoo Cause they hurt more than you do It's the inner lie Of the score Oh, the inner lie of Scorpio. Joining them soon Honor your mother and father And all of the folks On the moon In watery handwriting Scattered in drops on my window pane 
road I'm the weather vane I'm the man who loves the rain Don't last too long The world changes under your feet Life is eternal Life is so brief And life is so sweet Sweeter than even A fox in a hole Or a thorn in a brain He wrote I I'm the weather vane Swaying with every feeling That hits me again And again I'm the man Who loves the rain I'm the man Loves the rain. You have two graves. Your name's on both of them. I like to keep people guessing as well when I'm close to them. I have two clouds, both of them hard to contain. One of them showers the flowers, the other one bursts into flames. I I'm the weather vane Love me or leave me You have to believe me I'll jump your train I'm the man Who loves the rain I'm the man Loves the rain Don't try to leave Don't try to remain I'm the man Who loves the rain One day The sky will turn into the sea One day The ugly truth will be made Over to beauty And one day Enlightenment will blossom from your porch And one day that lonesome astronaut Will be the one to launch One day the fish will roost up in the mine Day me a tree, and one day there'll be an antidote, and you'll come home to me. 
One day we'll lure the parasite out where we can see it And nobody will ever want to feed it One day, one day, one day One day The pretty sufferers will climb out of their hole And one day the sun will shine on their disjointed souls One day when you are empty you'll discover just what full it and one day the human race will not be run by bullets One day, one day, one day One day The engineers will come and start up your and I develop feelings for everyone I've seen. One day the color of your skin won't be the great divide, and one day you'll care how other people feel inside. One day, one day, one day Between your life and death Don't hold your breath It's being scheduled Hey, I'm Bill DeVille, and I'm here with Robin Hitchcock. Robin, so Hi. nice to see you. Bill, how are you? Good. It seems like it's been forever, you know, with this pandemic that happened and all that. How you been? Well, time has elongated. I've been all right. And yourself? I've been excellent as well. So you got a new album called Shuffle Mania that was issued this past, what was it, November? Something like that, yeah. 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 Well, tell us about the album. Uh, Shuffle Mania is the first one that... I've done for Tiny Ghost Records, which is run by my wife, Emma Swift, who mm -hmm. also records for Tiny Ghost, and it's our label um, that we launched seriously during the pandemic. We had it as a sort of merch um, organ before that, yeah. for, but um, with the advent of the pandemic, um, Direct-to-consumer sales, mail-outs, became really essential because you couldn't tour. We couldn't tour. So um, Emma made finished off her Bob Dylan covers record, Blonde on the Tracks, and I recorded Shuffle Mania, and we did all this at home in Nashville during lockdown in 2020. Um, but uh, it takes so long to... Pressing. Yeah. <laughs> Emma's record, we had, we had a Norwegian pressing plant who got her record done in something like six weeks. So within two months of finishing recording it, we were mailing them out from our kitchen. Um, but Shuffle Mania, I actually finished off, I don't know, late in 2021, but it took us a year to get the vinyl to press up. Um, what am I saying? Pressing plants, you know what I mean? Seems like there's a shortage of pressing plants, and it might not have been a bad time to start your own. <laughs> well, uh, sadly, the one in our Norwe friend, Norwegian friends one discontinued, but you yeah. know, we've just found another one in Nashville with a much quicker turnover. So I think that whatever Emma and I come up with um, will be a quicker turnover time. But basically what the pandemic has done for us, I suppose, is to find alternative ways of making a living apart from touring, which still remains quite a perilous process. Yeah. Um, oh, I love 
being able to get out and play in front of people, partly because 18 months off it, you really didn't think it was going to happen again. And you still don't know when you start a tour whether you're going to get to the end of it, you know. Yeah. You've been doing this a long time. Was that the first time you uh, were off the road for 18 months in your you know, career? It's the first time in my life that I didn't go anywhere for six months. I didn't even cross the road for three months. Wow. We'd see people, you know, the unbelievers kind of jogging around and pushing their babies and things like that. But as far as we knew, if, you know, you could get, quite a lethal dose of covid by just passing someone on the other side of the road you know so yeah, yeah. this is before the vaccines and and it, you got to remember that it wasn't that long ago that it was you know we were all held captive by a life threatening virus now we're zapping around you know the idea of us sitting unmasked in a studio would have been unthinkable yeah. 3 years ago so and we all got to that, you know, everybody just across the world had to shut down. The world had to become an indoor world, you know, unless you were one of those people who said, oh, I don't care, yeah. ain't going to bother me. You know, like the people downtown in Nashville who were boogieing the red hats and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the old death cult. But uh, no, I, I was. I didn't go anywhere. Quite a shock. <laughs> what did you learn about yourself, you know, a few years of not touring? You know, a guy's been on the road for the last uh, off and on 40 years. I learned that I really like to keep busy. Yeah. And obviously, you've also got to make money. Um, you know, I couldn't just sort of sit there watching reruns of Bewitched or something. You know, I had to, <laughs> I actually had to. You know, I have to earn money, but um, but I like keeping busy, and I, um, I for a while I mimicked my father, who'd been a painter for a bit. So when we first locked down, I kind of got got the easel out, and just sort of retreated into painting. Um, but I also was seemed to be writing songs. I was probably finishing songs because I wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it was. I hadn't really finished any songs for ages. Just before lockdown, I went to Mexico and I had some, I had a, the feathery serpent god massage. I went into this tree house and there's these things you could get, you get the Kukulkan mas massage for like 80 bucks or something, yeah. you know. And I went to the serpent god's palace and, you know, who knows what atrocities were perpetrated in their name, but it was one of those all-purpose gods, you know, a winged serpent. So that covers a lot of ground in itself. Mm -hmm. You can fly and squirm and borrow and eat. You're a symbol of fertility, power, wisdom. God knows, snakes mean so many different things, you know. Creepy but understanding. Um, as You know, as ambivalent as fate itself, something to propitiate, worship, fear, adore, who knows. Uh, or Quetzalcoatl, probably pronounced completely differently in its day. Um, I'm not even going to try that. Technically, one. never yeah. existed, but still a powerful force. Uh, so I just felt the serpent god upon me in January 2020, and I started finishing songs, and then, and then I got locked down. So I got the chance to actually record them at home on a tiny machine that would fit into a packet of Cheerios. Wow. You could put two of them in there. Mm -hmm. Last time I made a record at home, the desk took up half the kitchen table. The first time I made a record at home in 1992, we had the whole BBC mobile truck parked outside my house on the Isle of Wight. Um, you know, I had a major label deal in yeah. those days, so you could do those things. Now I'm, you know, I've been through an indie label and now we're simply our own business um and the recording is like it, that thing is that big and you plug the little mics into it and you've yeah. got four tracks and i sent them off to people i sent in a life of scorpio i sent to johnny marr and he sent back a host of overdubs on that one what about the title track what can you tell us about that shuffle that's, mania that's kind of a punk rocky sort of fun fun little tune well i sent that to brendan benson you know Brendan? I know and, Brendan, uh, the rack on tours, yeah. Jack White's friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he'd produced, From Detroit. And yeah. he'd produced my Detroit indeed, same mm -hmm. as Kelly Stoltz. Right. They only used to hunt in a pack, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they, 
yeah, I sent him that song and he just put a bass, drums, electric guitars, harmonies, the lot, you know, on that. Um, Brendan actually was only about two miles away from me in Nashville. So I did, mm -hmm. I even saw him once. We stood on the balcony 10 feet apart and sang a Beatles song into a camera. Um, but the rest of them I didn't see. Um, the Shuffle Man itself, uh, yeah, the Shuffle Man is, well, it's like quite a lot of characters on the record. They're sort of, they're a bit like superheroes or yeah. supervillains, which I suppose is a modern version of gods. They're sub-personalities. Um, you know, the feathery serpent god has a lot of power. The shuffle man is like the agent of fortune, the agent of fate. And so it's very ambivalent. It's like a Braxis or Janus or, you know, it sort of could go either way. Yeah. Um, it's like a playing card that's the reverse upside down. The shuffle man, you don't know whether, whether you can trust him or not, but you want to stay on the right side of him. And the shuffle man throws you the cards and you have to make sense of them. Just as in life, you know, you have to, <laughs> you have to surf what fate hands you, you know, the people who do the best in this life are the people who are able to adapt to their circumstances. Um, I don't think I necessarily am particularly, yeah. but good at that. But, you know, so I think that shuffle man is, something I kind of admire and um, I'm a little bit in awe of, want to stay the right side of. Um, and he's done there's something quite funny. He's got a top hat. He's like a trickster. He's um, I, I, he's just like a superhero or supervillain, you know. Right. Was Shuffle Mania also inspired by the shuffle button on a CD player or iTunes or any <laughs> other number of things? No, I think it's more that I... <laughs> the that, play? And I think it's more that I just sort of shuffle around the world like a maniac. Yeah. Or did. Um, and the pandemic sort of put a stop to that. Um, and then I've resumed it a bit, but I'm really aware that I can't do it like I did. I just turned 70 and I, I have a lot of projects I want to accomplish. So I'm going to reduce the amount of Yeah, I saw you posted touring. that on Facebook. You're going to yeah. be doing a little less touring. Well, we're happy you're in the Twin Cities with us Well, now. it's very nice to be here. And I think, uh, you know, the States is the last place that I will stop touring. And um, and certainly the bigger cities such as, such as here in Chicago, you know, I will probably carry on doing until I'm an elderly papoose, mm -hmm. you know. But. Now, how does an Englishman like you end up living, you know, spending a lot of time in Nashville, Tennessee? Well, because an Englishman like me has a far bigger audience over here than they ever did in Britain. Really? I mean, I, my, I come from there, you know, just like people who come from the underworld have to go back. But I don't actually. Yeah. 80% um, of my audience is over here. So basically, I work in the States. And um, unless I work entirely by post, which we learn to do, but even even mailing stuff from Britain to the States is a headache. It's easier to, you know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like it or not, I'm an American act. And I've also spent so much time over here that I've probably been internally rewired in, in American ways that I don't necessarily understand. Um, both countries have their advantages and their and their drawbacks. You know, Britain, America's a, a, a can-do culture. Yeah. In Britain, our motto is "Sorry, love, we're closed. It can't be done." Oh, it's, I'm sorry, we're just shut. You know, well, it's Sunday. I don't think we can get them in now. Yeah. You know, over here, it's more like, well, we got to sell you something. What do you want? We can get it for you. You know, there's a sort of not everyone's high on life or boy howdy and there's a kind of lonely desperation in the states britain's just got a sort of lonely passive fatality and yeah scandinavia is just beautifully desolate you know has the uh, nashville music scene rubbed off on you at all yeah yeah i love it um the one album i made before this shuffle main uh, what's it called just self-titled brendan 
recorded and, and co-produced that Brennan Benson and we got mm -hmm. we got um the Johns in John Radford and John Estes two Johns with not an H between them <laughs> um we had them and Brendan's on this new one and I would totally I will be doing more recording in Nashville I and mean, Emma's made her uh she used Nashville people on on her upcoming projects um it's it's music city you know it's what it says on the label you don't go to Nashville for theater um or art galleries or something like that but if you want to record you, well, you want to go to shows and see good people playing with fantastic sound systems you know everyone was there we saw tom petty on his last tour right. um i see all kinds of people wandering through johnny ma was playing there a few years ago wise blood um god um so it's not just a you know a country music town. No, yeah. no, not at all. It, it, Nashville, as I always say, you know, it wears a, a Stetson hat for publicity purposes, but actually, I don't think it's that country. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not East Nashville. I mean, all of that stuff's going on, you know. Yeah. Um, but a lot of music publishers are there now. Um, it, the studios are there, the session players of the Nashville Cats. Mm -hmm. um, just as, you know, Bob Dylan put it on the the map outside country music by recording Blonde on Blonde right. there, which they've never quite forgotten. And a lot of the people that played on that were technically country players. And he then actually wound up making a country record. So it's like it sort of began to bring out that side of him yeah but um it, you don't necessarily have to make anything country there at all you yeah know? do you think you could make a country record with pedal steel and all if you oh, wanted to? i had pedal steel on the one before the, the self-titled i could make a record that sounded like a country record with pedal steel and you know because you're sort of talking about things that are you know yeah or you know got those sort of tempos the sort of basic elvis presley in as much as he was country yeah you know but i don't know that much about pure country and pure country has it's gone it's you know there's a lot of americana there there are a lot of which is really old-fashioned you know it's like they're still waiting for punk rock to happen um mm -hmm. no i'm often i'm often i often think about that i guess it just depends how you how you approach the songs yeah. i could i could probably go in and cut a country album. You think you could have some, somebody would cover, uh, you, you could write a song and have one of the big Nashville stars like George Strait cover your song? No, no, the lyrics would put people off completely. Yeah. And if I wrote a song like that, the people that like me wouldn't, wouldn't get it, you know? They'd say, well, this, is, this isn't you, Hitchcock. Yeah. Come on, you know? Um, so, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I am fated to be in my own niche forever. I've sort of created it and I'm, and I'm stuck there, but yeah. I would certainly, the, what I would do though, if I, if I went twangy is I would also bring in like a sitar sound, a sitar and maybe a, a kind of quite aggressive banjo sound, which is quite similar that, yeah. that sort of, you know, Not that that sounds like a banjo, but um, so you've got sort of country raga rock, which of course is sort of what the birds were doing mm -hmm. in 1967. So the question is, would I be doing anything new? And the answer is probably no, but I certainly like, you know, I could haul that style out of the, I, I could, I could customize my version of it yeah, and it would all be done on modern equipment. So it would probably just, sound different you know uh no that's a good idea bill i might it could happen any second how about <laughs> it i happen to notice and i thought this was the funny the coolest thing ever is that there is a facebook page called robin hitchcock's shirt shirts. really are you are you aware of this website it no, just shows pictures no. of you and all the cool shirts wow no i didn't i didn't know that i know there's 
They had the Museum of Cones a while back. Are the cones I used to draw? Cones, pylons that I did artwork on. But um, I didn't know there was a shirt one. There's a there's a shirt one. Where do you get all your shirts? You have quite an abundance. The polka dot ones, a few cowboy shirts. Oh, I've got polka dot cowboy shirts. Uh, well, they were made in Sydney in Australia by a man named Russell Wade, who um, likes measuring you and making those shirts. Mm -hmm. um, some stuff is just like Paul Smith, you know, and some of it is a company called Blackwa on the south coast of Britain. There's very psychedelic ones, since you ask, and some are... I think this is just a Kenzo one, so... Well, it's a cool shirt. Thank you. I mean, you just got to be shirt oriented i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's been a pleasure to chat with you well likewise Th thanks for having me in the studio and uh, it should be it should sound as good as i think so me can sound with a um a slightly out of tune acoustic guitar and i saw your next album is going to be an instrumental record what was the inspiration behind that one I've been playing instrumental music since before I ever wrote any songs. So, you know, once I could get a guitar more or less in tune yeah. in about 1968, 69, I started sort of doing these. Raga, mm -hmm. kind of faux raga, Indian, you know, that was voguish in those yeah. days. And I've just been doing them for years. So we just thought, you know, why not record some? Meanwhile, I've written, I'd made up, composed a few pieces of music that I thought didn't need vocals. Yeah. So it's a mixture of um, sort of bluesy, ragery instrumentals, kind of thing people were churning out a lot around 69, 70, you know, mm -hmm. especially or people like Roy Harper and... Um, the Incredible String Band, Bert right. Yance, those, the British folky right. the people, the generation mm -hmm. ahead of, above me, you know. And mm -hmm. um, so it, uh, that was that's that, and that, that I believe that's called Life After Infinity, and that is out on Tiny Ghost really soon, yeah. In like a month or something like that. And I want to thank yeah. producer Derek Stevens, also engineer Eric Romani, sir, for making us uh, sound so good, and video from Evan Clark and Peter Eklund for making us look so good. Nice work, gentlemen. And Robin Hitchcock, again, it's been a pleasure to hey, chat. Hey, thanks and, for having me, mm -hmm. having me on The Current. All right. Thanks. Cheers. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.